and welcome to my video on minor characters in Hetton. Firstly, I'm going to speak about Nanny, who acts as the mother figure to John Andrew. After John Andrew falls from his pony at the beginning, we get a repeated foreshadowing of the fatal and tragic riding accident that is to come. This foreshadowing is usually portrayed in Nanny's direct speech and is depicted in the phrase, he had what might have been a serious fall this morning, on page 24. But Nanny appears rather incompetent as she doesn't have much concern about his falls. Nanny is also subject to the mocking behaviour of John Andrew. This behaviour is in fact learnt from Ben Hackett, his riding instructor. John sings and dances, calling Nanny a silly old tar. This phrase is rather humorous to the audience, but Nanny is fairly shocked by it. She is incapable of disciplining him and states, I'm going to speak to your mother about you, demonstrating that Brenda is the point of authority. Tony is left to deal with John's behaviour, but John simply dismisses this by retorting with the phrase, she's paid to when asked to think about what Nanny does for him. This highlights the lack of relationship between Nanny and John in comparison to the bond he has formed with Ben. So now we're going to move on to Ben Hackett. He mostly looks after John and John looks up to him an awful lot more than he does to Tony. Phrases such as silly old tart and I just open my legs and cut an arse up appear in John's vocabulary directly as a result of his contact with Ben. This is highlighted by Nanny who states that it's been the same ever since Ben Hackett started teaching him. Ben Hackett is primarily used by war to demonstrate class divisions. John fails to understand the machinations of class. John asks rather innocently, is Ben less fortunate than me? Illustrating his lack of awareness of the lower class and somewhat comes across as rather condescending towards those who are in fact less fortunate. He fails to comprehend his parents' concern of his growing relationship with Ben. John replaces Tony as his father figure with Ben. When speaking to Tony, John repeatedly brings up the entertaining times with Ben and states with enthusiasm phrases such as Ben says so and Ben saw a woman who looked like a fish. Now moving on to the crazy vicar. War uses the vicar to reiterate the message that Hetton is a society of the past. Nothing is changing and everything is still very much traditional. The vicar is inappropriate for the time in which he is living. His congregations are fit around the time of the war. This is illustrated in the phrase, had done nothing to adapt them to the changed conditions, page 34. War describes to us that he has served in India. War most probably decides to use this phrase because he is showing that people of Hetton adhere to the past, much like the vicar who was clinging to when England was an imperialist nation. Whilst War is talking to us about the vicar, he does this in a circular kind of motion, so what he says at the beginning of his description, he repeats at the end. This will take place on page 34, and it's quite hard to explain, but basically, War does this so that as an audience, we are also repeating the pattern and cycle of the daily lives of people in Hetton. War is forcing us to become part of the congregation, so that we are also living in a past and unchanged repetitive state. So now if we look at the men at Bratz Club, who are in fact quite insignificant, but do demonstrate the uninteresting and tedious lives of the men at Hetton. Most of this information comes from page 67. The men are dressed in white ties and tailcoats, sitting by themselves, and are in low spirit. The men have been abandoned at the last minute by their women. The verb abandoned suggests that these people are the leftovers. They are unwanted at the dinner parties that the rest of Hetton are taking part in. The possessive pronoun, there, is quite ironic because even though they feel that they have some kind of ownership over the women, these women are in fact leaving them and moving on because they are actually capable of doing this. 
Jock becomes rather aggressive at the club, stating, I asked that bitch out. This aggression is as a result of the rejection from women. The men are all sitting by themselves. The lack of connection between them implies that these men prefer to be isolated, possibly because they are now used to being on their own, as it's some kind of habit. Two women, Babs and Millie, appear at Bratz. They are prostitutes. Although this is usually a negative portrayed job, in the context of this novel they are viewed as successful businesswomen. So after Millie and Babs have finished talking to Tony and Jock, Babs states, well how about a little present? And Tony replies with, sorry how much? This conveys the capitalist ability of women and links to Mrs Beaver, another successful businesswoman. Paradoxically, both women, are all, both women are also portrayed as intelligent prostitutes. Bab says, I think it's nice for a girl to be interested in, in things. I like gentlemen best. They've got more to say. Prostitutes, who are usually associated with a lower class, are in fact presented with having opinions and intelligent views, somewhat making them seem more significant and better than the likes of the pathetic and pathetic Tony and Jock. Other minor characters are Veronica, Daisy and Polly. These women are the ones that pull Hessen apart and criticise Tony's precious house right before his very eyes. Phrases such as, bit mouldy, shapes all wrong, everything's horrible, it's so dark, the structure does rather limit one, are all phrases said by these women. The women along with Brenda take the mickey out of Tony and repeatedly burst into laughter. The sad moment when they have a bet on what colour buttonhole Tony will be wearing shows the cruelest, cruelness and immaturity of the women's behaviour. Thanks for listening. Bye guys.